Hello everyone, this is Svetlana and Ballet Conrad with you, Ballet Outlaws. Um, actually, I would like to, uh, we put some uh, master classes up, um, six of them, and uh, I already talked about two, uh, the, the, now let's talk about the other ones. Um, so, <clears throat> well, but before we continue, actually, let's do our routine, you know, locate the uh, ballet button, put it in, and hold it if you have a curve in your lower back. If you put your if you put your belly button in, it will actually flatten you in the back. So let's see and hold it. I'm sitting right now, and I'm, for this purpose, I'm actually doing the same thing too. You can sit and still hold your belly button in. So let's do it as I'm talking. So anyway, um, I actually wanted to um, talk about one of the uh, master classes, one that we just uh, recorded and posted. It's uh, about developing the back and turnout. Uh, I like that one. It's one of my, well, a lot of the, all of the classes that we put up, it's they all my favorite one. They're all special. I like all of them. Uh, none of the uh, classes that we put up some, for some reason, you know, I cannot say like, oh, this is not my favorite class or anything like that. They all are um, because because you can see the progress and uh, the process of doing them. Um, sometimes when I go back and look at uh, some of the videos, especially the first one, the six hour DVD, the six hour course of placement. When I look at myself, I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> you know, this is a, it's hard to see uh, how to acknowledge that it was me actually. So anyway. Um, well, uh, the, this one, specifically this one, that I like that one, it's about the back. Because the back is a challenging one, uh, is a, the, the most challenging, uh, I would say, part of the placement to do. Um, part of the, the back is, you know, it's a very, like, um, tedious thing to really achieve, especially if you have a back problem like I did. Um, it's a, the scoliosis and kyphosis and lordosis, it's all of that to lighten, to straighten up the back. And, uh, it's all part of it. So anyway, but uh, what I've noticed, what I like about this specific uh, video uh, and masterclass, I like that uh, actually you can see how back affects the quality of the movement. And uh, for me, it actually feels let's put it this way it is really 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 hard to keep the the back straight um well if i'll just compare like to stand like a soldiers uh, like a soldier it's very really hard for me uh, because the tendency for me to go down always with my whole upper uh, body you know especially i'm big up front uh, so yes, it's all about that. It just feels like I can. It's easier for me to go down than actually stay up. There's a lot of weight here, um, including my head. <laughs> you know, so it's kind of like heavy. <clears throat> but I'm getting used to it. It's getting better. So, but I do notice when I actually do hold my back, the the lower body works really good and works really easy. Let's put it this way. Um, there is one strange thing that I did notice when Eric constantly rep re repeat everybody and see he said that you know you need to lift your weight off the hips so that in order for hips to rotate and um, now since I've been more aware of my back and how to do it and how to develop all the strengths a little bit more in there of course I have way more room more room to go to get stronger I noticed that it is really, really true that when he says it, like, well, if you line up your back correctly and the back will be holding, so then it releases the weight of your hips, so so therefore you can rotate more your hips and rotate and get the turnout. And it's so true. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a really, it's a huge difference in your body when you feel it, when you realize in that. And um, I can't really tell you when it's gonna happen uh, because for different people it's gonna be different. Depends on how um, the strains and depends how bad uh, backs are, you know. So it, it, all of those little things are important to know. But for me, for example, there is another thing. Just I noticed it, so I can do it maybe like one or two times in a row in classes, and then the the back get tight 
you know, and let's just say the next time, the next class, I can't repeat it again because my back is too tight, like, you know, it goes like from lower back to middle back, from the middle back and goes to the little bit of upper back where the um, shoulder blades are, then a little bit in between them and here. Now I got to a point where it's right here, you know, so it's all right here. This camera is very sensitive. It just rotates every time when I move. Okay, never mind. Um, so, um, and uh, so yes, I mean that's why I noticed that it's, you know, so like for example, like when we recorded this master class, and now I, uh, in a few days after it, I noticed that it tied up right here, and so I couldn't repeat the same feelings that I actually had when we were recording the master class. So it's so. So that's that is a uh, as a student you have to be aware of it, and as a teacher also you have to be aware of it. So you, the students will uh, feel sore muscles, so the next time they will not be able to reproduce the same feelings. If we're talking about for the student, just if you rely on the feelings, then you're probably not going to repeat it. So yes, and that's why when you have the feelings that you can't repeat or you can't rely on the, the like internal feelings that have felt but just say a few days ago yes it becomes a little bit frustrating and that's why you need a teacher who uh, actually will help you and guide you through it and take you methodically okay calm down don't freak out just take one step at a time and take it slowly and we'll do it and do it again. It, it is frustrating, especially for the for the student to be taught this way because, you know, you always want to rely on the previous experience and unfortunately it's not how it works with the placement. It's not, it's never going to be the previous experience for one simple reason, you're getting stronger um and um you know muscle adjust and you're not gonna repeat eventually you will but at the beginning it, it's gonna be like back and forward like that so you can't really rely <clears throat> on your own internal feelings if we're talking about that so now for example well i can rely for example on my stomach like i know for example that i'm not holding right now so i have to hold it again so let's re-engage it put it back in uh, ballot button i know so you see I, i'm aware of those things like i'm aware like i know that when my hips are not going all the way they're not engaged all the way so I, i'm aware when my legs are not working as much the back is the hardest thing to be aware of because it's the back you know there's a lot of weight there it's very very hard to no, you know, there's not like there's no like a specific muscle that I would say, oh, well, that muscle doesn't hold it. And no, it's not. So it's just the back is a lot because it's a tension. You know, if it's a tension, so it's like the neck hurts, and if the neck hurts, then it just pulls somewhere, and then you just start the whole thing like that. So it's so that's what I've noticed. But anyway, um, so the the back is a very very complicated conversation um i probably will do more the podcast on that uh how it actually feels internally when, when you do it because now i'm actually getting a little bit better in it to control my back it is a really 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 uh tedious and complicated feeling so you can i think a lot of people they always want to know how do ballet dancers achieve that back you know how do they get trained to get that you know and those uh, that is the most you know interesting question and i'll try to talk about it more because now i'm getting stronger in in a, in in my back so i can actually describe it better how it feels for the student so anyway that's it <laughs> see you next time bye <laughs>